Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths channel. And in this video, I'm going to be going through a question which is from one of the what are called Solomon papers. This is uh, Solomon L of the old C3, which now corresponds to the P3, um, Pure Mathematics P3 International A level. And um, this is a question about um, algebraic fractions. Part A, we have to just basically uh, combine these two fractions into one. So we have to just combine them into one fraction, subtract these two fractions from each other and express the answer as a single fraction in the simplest form. Um, and th this question is question number five from the end of topic worksheet, which I gave to my students. And uh, one of the students asked me to answer this question. It's actually number five from that worksheet, but number four from the Solomon L paper. That's why it says four here. But it's actually number five from the worksheet. So it's the right question that was asked by one of my students. And that's why I'm answering the question right now. Okay, so we have to express this algebraic uh, this fraction or this sum of algebraic fractions in um, as one fraction. So we have to basically subtract them. Now, just like with normal fractions, just like with, you know, when we subtract, like, for example, um, say if we say a third um, let's say a half minus a third, for example. If you want to subtract these two fractions, what we would do is we would make the denominators the same. So we'd say, okay, what do I have to multiply by two? And what can I multiply by three to get them to be the same denominator? So you can say, okay, I can make them both into six because that's the lowest common multiple. And I have to multiply this by three and I have to multiply this by two. So the top gets multiplied by three. So you're going to get three over six. So a half is equivalent to three over six. And a third is equivalent to 2 over 6. And then I can subtract them and I get 1 over 6 as my answer. Okay, so similarly, we have to do the same thing here. We have to express them with the same denominators. So this is x minus 3 times x plus 4. And this is x minus 3 times 2x minus 1. So basically, what this needs to be the same as that, it needs to be multiplied by x plus 4. And what this needs to be the same as that, it, it needs to be multiplied by... Sorry. What this needs to be the same as that is it has to be multiplied by 2x minus 1. And what this fraction needs to be the same as this fraction is to be multiplied by x plus 4. Then you'll have the same denominator. So, for example, what I can do here is I can say, let's call this x minus 3 times x plus 4 times 2x minus 1 minus, and I'll, I'll call this x minus 3 times x plus 4 times 2x minus 1. So now I've made them the same denominator. Now, what have I done to this to make it this denominator? What have I? What, what's different between this and this? I've multiplied it by 2x minus 1. So I must multiply the numerator also by 2x minus 1. And similarly here, I've multiplied this by x plus 4. So I must multiply the numerator by x plus 4. So x minus 1 times x plus 4. Now... What I can do is I can expand the numerator. So I can basically, it's one whole big fraction. So I'm just going to do it like as a line like that. Okay. Um, so we have one denominator, which is common. So I can write it under one big fraction. And this is 2x minus 1. So now I have to expand the numerator. So I have x times 2x, which is 2x squared. And x times minus 1, which is minus x. And minus 10 times 2x, which is minus 20. So you're going to have minus 21x. So minus x minus 20x then you have minus 10 times minus 1 which is plus 10 now i'm going to be very careful here and put this in one big bracket when i expand this because a minus sign will cause problems if i don't so this is going to be x squared and you're going to have minus 4x and you have minus 32 you have x squared plus 4x minus 8x which is minus 4x and minus 32 and now i'll just do this to keep it looking neater I'm going to have, if I expand that, I'm going to have 2x squared minus x squared, which is 1x squared. Minus 21x minus minus 4x, which is minus 21x plus 4x, is going to be minus 17x. And I have 10 minus minus 32, which is 10 plus 32, which is 42. I didn't need to make it so long. And I'm going to keep the denominator as it is for now, because I'm going to be trying to looking, look for common factors so i'm going to try to factorize the numerator in the end so that i can cancel out any common factors that might be there so i have 2x minus 1 so now the numerator i've got to try to factorize this 
Now, I've got to find two numbers that multiply to give you 42, uh, positive 42, and they add to give you negative 17. So I know they both have a negative value, so they have to add product of, of plus 42 and a sum of, of negative 17. Okay, so think of two numbers that multiply to give you 42, and when you add them, you get 17. They have to have the same sign. Um, 42, you're going to have 21 times uh, 2. That's not going to work. 3 times 3 into 4 goes 1. Remainder 1, 3 times 4. That's the 14, sorry. 3 times 14 is 42. So it's 3 and it's 14. So it has to be negative 3 and negative 14. So you have x minus 3 and x minus 14. And here you've got underneath this x minus 3 times x plus 4 times 2x minus 1. And you can see here that the x minus 3s will cancel out. So you're left with x minus 14 over x plus 4 times 2x minus 1. And what is it that we had to show? Okay, we didn't have to show, uh, and they didn't tell us what to show, but that is going to be your answer. You can leave your answer like this, or if you want, you can expand the denominator, but there's no need to. If you expand the denominator, you're going to get 2x squared, um, and you're going to get minus x plus 8x, which is um, plus 7x, and 4 times minus 1, which is minus 4. You could write your answer like this. You could write your answer like that. Both are perfectly fine. Okay, always keep this factorized until the last step, and you see common factors can cancel out, and then once you cancel out the common factors, you can expand the denominator if you wish. Okay, so there's the answer to part A. Okay, and part B... Okay, I'm I think I need this answer in part B. So I'm going to just do something. I'm going to take this answer and I'm going to paste it over here. Okay, it says, hence, show that the equation x minus 10 over x minus 3 times x plus 4 minus x minus 8 over x minus 3 times 2x minus 1 equals 1 has no real roots. So when it says hence, it means using what you just did. So I can say that this whole thing is equal to that straight away. No need to do it again. x minus 14 over 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 equals 1. Okay, so I can use this answer. I could have used the factorized version of it, but there's no need to. It's fine to do this. Okay, because now I want to, to, to basically try to solve this equation or begin trying to solve this equation and then show that it has no real root. So I've got to get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by this 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. So I have x minus 14 equals 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. Now let me bring all the terms onto one side. So on this side I've got 2x squared. I've got 7x minus x which is plus 6x. I've got minus 14 plus, sorry, minus 4 plus 14 which is plus 10. Okay, so I end up with this, which I can divide by 3, uh, sorry, by 2, because 2 is a common factor. I'll have x squared plus 3x plus 5. So I've got to show that the equation x squared plus 3x plus 5 equals 0 has no real roots. And this is a quadratic equation. And we learnt in P1 even that the way to show that a quadratic will have no real roots is one of the ways to show it is by its discriminant. So if b squared minus 4ac is going to be less than 0, then there will be no real roots. So therefore, let's find out what b squared minus 4ac is equal to. So you can say if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, okay, then no real roots. So let's see what happens. b squared minus 4ac. Now remember here, this is a, the coefficient of a is equal to the coefficient of x squared b is equal to the coefficient of x, and c is equal to the constant. So you're going to have b squared minus 4ac is going to be, let me put this down here and make a bit more space, b squared minus 4ac is going to be 9 minus 4 times 1 times 5, which is 9 minus 20, which is negative 11. Therefore, b, as, as b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, therefore, there are no roots no real roots to the equation okay so i hope that was clear it's not my best handwriting but that's how you answer this question from solomon 
L, question number four. And from the end of topic worksheet for chapter one of P3, which, and it's in that particular worksheet, it's question number five. Thank you for watching. Um, I will have a playlist on the top here with um, questions from this Solomon paper. Um, and as I answer them, it will get filled up. And I'll have a playlist over here from questions about algebraic fractions. And a subscribe button will be here. And I'll put some card taking you to some weird and wonderful place on the top. I haven't decided yet. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video.